can get you what you want. I can. I can get you anything. You just have to talk to me. You have to trust me, okay? Trust me. Because I'm, I'm your priest. I'm the magic man. Talk to me about costs here. Okay, now, before we get into numbers, I want you to try a taste, okay? I got, I got a deck with me. Right here. Step into my office. When we talk about films that are ahead of their time, Catherine Bigelow's 1995 film Strange Days comes to mind for me. If you clicked on this video, then you've probably already seen the movie, so I'm going to be going over some heavy spoilers. And maybe this is just my interpretation, but I'm going to be calling out some of the hidden messages that I was able to pick up on. Instead of dwelling on a whole bunch of random facts like how Catherine Bigelow was inspired by the LA riots when it came down to making this movie, or how Fatboy Slim sampled Angela Bassett's voice for his iconic song Right Here Right Now, I'm really going to dive into just my interpretation of this film. Okay, so first the setup for those who haven't seen it. It's set in LA during the last days of the 20th century. It has this kind of dystopian cyberpunk type of a vibe to it. Our main character is Lenny Nero, who is a former cop who's now this seedy black market salesman who's peddling this device called a squid. Now the squid is pretty cool, but I'm gonna let Lenny explain exactly what this is. Superconducting quantum interference device, squid. It's a piece of somebody's life. It's pure and uncut, it's straight from the cerebral cortex. I mean, you're there, you're doing it, you're seeing it, you're hearing it, you're feeling it. Almost like some twisted Black Mirror episode where you're enticed by the technology, but little by little you start to see the darkness and the downfalls of its existence. So on the flip side of experiencing a vacation that you can't afford or a sexual experience that you don't want to risk your marriage on, now we start diving into the seedy stuff where we're dealing with armed robbery or even murder. And in order for these things to hit the market, they would have had to have happened in real life. So someone actually got robbed, someone actually got murdered. So the victims in these scenarios, their pain becomes Comes your pleasure. You're there for the adrenaline rush, but not necessarily the outcome. You don't have to deal with the repercussions from the person who is being victimized in those scenarios. You just have to accept that this really happened. And even with that, I mean, maybe I'm a sick fuck, but I would probably still buy it. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not alone on that. Some of you would too, admit it. But uh, enough about me. Let, let's focus back on Lenny. Lenny's last name is Nero, and I don't think that's an accident. If you follow history, then you would know that Nero is one of the most vicious Roman emperors to ever rule. He ruled at a time when there was a lot of social and political change happening. And that's a pretty heavy theme throughout this film. The entire world has kind of just gone to shit. There's police corruption. You know, it's not too far off from where we are right now, but just, you know, enhanced. Looking back at Roman history, it's said that Nero was responsible for the great fire of Rome. And as the city was burning to ashes, he just casually played music while marveling at the destruction and chaos that was happening around him. And that's kind of what we get from Lenny in this scene here while he's just casually driving down the strip witnessing all this chaos that's happening around him. Now Lenny isn't physically playing music in this scene the same way that the Roman Emperor was, but he is listening to music on his radio. And not only is he listening to music, he's also listening to this DJ on a radio station who just so happens to be taking in calls from people who are concerned about the rapture and the end of days. So there's definitely a parallel here. And I can't point the finger at Lenny entirely, but he is partially responsible for this destruction. Like, I have to imagine that all these people doing all this crazy shit are wearing squids with the intent to sell their experiences to the highest bidder. And the most well-known person selling this stuff on the black market is Lenny. So in his mind, he's not looking at a city that's gone to shit. He's looking at potential profit. Like, to him, this entire city is just a bag. And just like Nero the Emperor, Lenny is the driving force of everything that's happening. I also took note of Lenny's license plate, which is LN237. Now, the LN, that's obvious. That's Lenny Nero. But the 237, that's interesting. 237 is a number that is infamous in films because it's a callback to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. The Shining deals with a lot of psychological themes. There's a lot of illusions, perception, isolation, and these are all things that a device like the squid offers to its customers. You're isolating yourself in this illusion to have the perception of the person who actually had the experience. And as the film explains, the longer you utilize the squid, the more paranoid you get, which kind of falls in line with what we see with Jack Torrance in The Shining. The last callback to The Shining is towards the end of the film when Lenny hesitates to go inside this hotel room where he's expecting to see the dead body of his ex-girlfriend. And even though it's a different room number than what we got in The Shining, it still gives its audience the vibe of stepping into the unknown. You're not sure what's on the other side of that door. If we focus back on Lenny's ex-girlfriend, it kind of helps us understand where Lenny is in his life. 
Her name is Faith, which represents what Lenny feels he's lost. I mean, they use this pun in the movie, so I'm not gonna take full credit for it. But little by little, we start to understand that this is a misconception. In the context of Lenny, he lost his faith, but yet he still believes in faith, and he wants to protect his faith. So when he's given a playback tape from one of her old friends, he starts to understand that her life might be in danger. It's only when we get to the end that he finds out that she's more involved in this whole conspiracy than he ever imagined. But in my interpretation, the film is telling us this every time that we see her on screen. Her wardrobe tells us everything we need to know about her true nature. Like in damn near every scene, she's wearing something that's shiny and it really catches the eye. So in my mind, this is a symbol of the old saying that everything that glitters isn't gold. And it's not just Faith's wardrobe. We also have to take into consideration her hair color as well. The color red is a symbol for everything that is bringing Lenny down in his life. We see Lenny use the squid to play back memories of the time when him and Faith were together. The box he keeps all these memories in is red. And by playing back all these memories, he's really just holding himself back from moving forward and evolving. This is his way of holding on to something that doesn't exist anymore. It also represents everything that's toxic in Lenny's life. His clients are toxic, his business partners are toxic, even his best friends are toxic. I'll dive a little bit more on Max in a minute. Take a look at the red truck that these corrupt cops trying to kill Lenny are driving. So anytime the color red is introduced, we understand that it doesn't serve Lenny's best interest. His only true ally is Mace. Now I don't have too many points on Mace outside of just calling out that she's my favorite character in the movie, so I'm gonna go ahead and pivot over to another female character who serves a bigger importance than you might realize. The character Iris is a prostitute who was hired by Faith's new boyfriend to follow one of his artists named Jericho One. While following Jericho One, she witnesses him get executed by two corrupt cops and this is the driving force of the film. The squid that she was wearing was to surveil on Jericho One to just watch his moves. But due to this murder, the playback of this squid now becomes evidence against the LAPD. And this is catastrophic because if put in the right hands, it's going to expose police corruption. Jericho One is an important revolutionary rapper and to see him die in this manner has the potential to start this revolutionary war. This has the power to ignite the people to fight against the government. So it carries a lot more weight than just two cops trying to bury evidence to hide this murder. So you can see the importance of this message. And that is exactly what Iris represents in this film. The name Iris is a callback to Greek mythology. She's the goddess of the rainbow. She's never the focal point of the story, but she's always there to pass important messages to the gods and humans. So by giving the playback of Jericho One's execution to Lenny, she's passing a message to the god who was actually peddling the squid product to the people. And I say god lightly, but you get what I'm saying. I mean, by Lenny's own words, he is the magic man. So if we hold on to that concept, it makes perfect sense why he's the perfect person for her to go to. Focusing back on Lenny's best friend, Max, he's my second favorite character in this movie. Looking at his car, we can see that it's red, which we've already identified as something that's always a negative for Lenny. We find out towards the end of the film that he's not only having an affair with Lenny's ex, Faith, but he's also the killer that's been sending Lenny playback tapes of his murders. As fucked up as this is, it's actually kind of cool as well, but when he goes to kill Iris, he's wearing a squid. He uses another squid to put on her, and then he connects the two together. That way, she can feel the excitement that he's getting while he kills her, and she's forced to sit there watching her own death. So it's this tug of war of emotions. She's forced to feel the pleasure of her own sexual abuse and murder while also going through the anxiety and fear of being the victim. Again, it's kind of fucked up, but it's one of the most clever ways I've seen somebody get murdered in a movie, like, ever. When we're first introduced to Max, listen to what he says to Lenny. Nice time. This kind of foreshadows that final fight between Lenny and Max. And their fight is also a symbol of their friendship. Like Max has figuratively and literally stabbed Lenny in the back. And what do you do to a friend who stabs you in the back? You cut ties with them and you watch their downfall. I don't know, I might be reaching, but I think I caught something that no one else has called out on this movie. Let me know what you think in the comments. But yeah, Strange Days is another one of my favorite films. It's a cult classic and I grew up watching this movie. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give me a like, comment, and subscribe. Until we have an actual squid, those are the only dopamine hits I'm gonna get. So help a brother out, man. Peace. You know one of the ways that movies are still better than playback? Because the music comes up, there's credits, and you always know when it's over. It's over!